Hello again, everyone. I am here today again with some more supplies to swatch for you. These are items that I purchased from Jackson's Art Supply in the UK, and these are, um, it was part, I, I think it was a New Year's sale or maybe a Boxing Day sale that um, I just got a few select items that I wanted to try out. Um, the bulk of it is these Neo Pastels from Carandash. And uh, I got these for uh, a class that I'm taking called Lush Landscapes. And um, one of the recommended items were these Neo Color uh, Neo Pastels. So these are oil pastels. I do have quite a few of the uh, Sennelier oil pastels, but from what I've heard, they have a fairly different texture from these. And I just wanted to try them out and given the sale, these were a little less expensive than normal, so I decided to kind of stock up on these. The other items that I got that I wanted to test for you is, so this is a Schmincke acrylic paint. I've never tried their acrylic paints, so I figured I would try just one color. Uh, they don't have a very big range of acrylic colors, uh, so this one was one that I haven't seen in other brands or I don't have from other brands, which is Matter Brown. And let's see, it, yeah, so this is PR206, so it's a red pigment in here. Um, the swatch online looked really pretty, so I'll, we'll see if that's the case. And then I got this Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. It's not a brush pen, it is uh, like a felt tip. Um, and I got this in sanguine color because I was um, trying to decide how to, or whether to, um, color in the white sewing on my Chic Sparrow uh, creme folio that I have. I'm not a huge fan of contrasting stitching, like with this white stitching as, as opposed to brown stitching on this leather. So I wanted to see if this would be a good match for coloring this white um, if I said elastic, I meant stitching. I, I can't remember what I just said. <laughs> um, but to color that white stitching. And some people on um, the Sheik's, it might have been the Sheik Sparrow community on Facebook recommended this particular, this particular color. So I'll see. I'm not going to, um, I mean, if I don't use it for that, I'll, I'll have uses for it. But I did want to test it out. Let's go ahead and test this out and see if it would be a good match here. So, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why it's not showing up super dark. It's almost like this one's almost out already. Um, Cause normally you get a pretty, you get a pretty hard line with that. But let's see if that would be a color that would go well with this. And I actually think that I probably need a darker color. So I think that this is, um, although this is a pretty dark creme, but I don't know, it's not that dark. Um, so I'm not sure this would be a good match. So this might have been um, someone steering me a little bit wrong here. But yeah, um, maybe it just needs to get going a little bit. I might store it upside down and see if I can get that going a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I will use this for other art, but just thought I would try that. So let me, so this is the pit artist pen in sanguine. How do you spell sanguine? There we go. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do the acrylic next because that, um, ooh, quite a bit came out. Oh, and that is a definitely a very pretty color. I have to get my acrylic brush and my acrylic water because I do use a separate water container for acrylics. Just dampening my brush ever so slightly. And I'm using my same Pentallic field book that I use for pretty much all of my swatches here. And yeah, that one's really pretty. I think that was a good choice because it's not something, 
it's not something that I have in other acrylic colors. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of this acrylic paint. Sorry, I have this on the floor. My little um, sheet of mixed media paper where I am brushing off any excess paint. And then rinse that off and we won't need anything acrylic related anymore. These two actually go together quite nicely, but this has a really nice luminosity. It's very nice. Okay, so that is all rinsed off. I'm gonna close that water up because we won't be needing that again. And I did get out a Q-tip just to have handy to smudge these um, oil pastels because I figured I showed that last time or I mentioned that last time. Sorry, it's hard to talk and write at the same time. Uh, and this is Matter Brown. But I mentioned uh, that you could smudge oil, oil sticks with a Q-tip. So I thought I would try that today. So I tried to put these in somewhat of a color order. There's a lot of them. So I'm just gonna be going through them rather quickly. Um, okay, so what I think, oh yeah, these are nice. They are definitely a little bit, um, they're pretty, still pretty smooth, but they're a little bit less smooth than the Sennelier, um, but in a good way, I think. So this is beige. I'm gonna label these as we go, just so that I don't get them out of order. And before I go on to another one, I'm gonna go ahead and get out the Q-tip and see how we can do with this blending. So it does work, but you you obviously are gonna lose some of the um, some of the pigment. So the pigment's just gonna come off onto the Q-tip. You could also use, but it does smooth out the color. You could also use a makeup sponge or something like that, but I did wanna sort of illustrate that. I'll do it with another color later on too. So that's beige. This one, what's this one? This one is uh, cocoa. And I am using watercolor paper, so you're gonna get some texture. Um, but as you can see, this one ended up blending out that texture, but also taking off some of the pigment. So this is cocoa. Oh, let me leave this uncapped and I'll just, so for ease of that. Okay, so let's see, this is uh, Van Dyke Brown. Yeah, this is, these are really gonna be good. Um, I'd never used these before and um, I think that I actually like the texture of these a little bit better than uh, the Sennelier. Van Dyke Brown. And I may have, end up having to go back over to this area here because I have quite a few, but we will get there when we get there. So this is Mouse Gray. Let's go ahead and put that up here. And then I have grayish black. I will bring these up to the camera as well towards the end. I really do need to get some more hot press paper to kind of play with these a little bit more. Because I am often working in watercolor and because of that, I have a lot of watercolor paper that's hot press because um, I don't generally work on um, on water watercolor paper that's hot press with my watercolors. So I think this is just black. So this will be a really useful one. Okay, and that is just black. And 
then the next color here is indigo blue. And I got all of these open stock. I did not want to get a set because I kind of wanted to be able to pick out the colors. And um, oftentimes you're getting, you know, sort of the primary colors and stuff. I, I focused on primaries as well, but I did want to get um, some more interesting colors for me. This is Prussian blue. Very lovely blue. But you can see by comparison, and, and different colors do have different textures. Some are smoother than others, but you can definitely see here you're getting this mottled look because of the paper texture. But here, where I've kind of smoothed it out, it's not as mottled. In fact, let's go ahead and I'm going to use the other end of the Q-tip here for the Prussian blue. Let's see. So it seems like it does kind of absorb, but you can blend it a little bit so that it is not as modeled there. Okay. And then we have a malachite green. This is turquoise green. Yeah, because you might not end up getting these different green colors in a set. Um, I'm just going to say turk green. I wasn't in, as interested in getting a bunch of standard colors. Okay, so this one is jade green. We have some other greens, but I think I'm going to go with the order that I have here. We might go to different places on the page here. So this is Indian red, which is a really nice, deep, earthy red. I was actually surprised to see how many colors were out of stock. Um... Maybe it's just because there was the sale and people were trying to get things on sale, but there were a lot of things out of stock, um, especially these colors. So this is Carmine, which is more of sort of like a typical red, but still leaning on the darker side. And I realized I didn't get a bright red. I think I had one in my cart and then I ended up taking it out. But that's okay. I did, however, get a rose color, which is sort of a brighter pink. Very nice. And I do, I wonder if these will dry a little bit more than the uh, Sennelier oils, oil pastels, because the Sennelier oil pastels seem to stay pretty darn, uh, not necessarily wet, but not dry, <laughs> a lot longer than, than other media. Okay, and this is Granite Rose. Let's see, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, so that, <laughs> okay, so this is the last one in the row. Granite Rose. And let's see, I do have there's an orange and yellow, but I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to these yellows and greens here. Um no, I'm gonna change my mind on that. 
Okay, so this is uh, Fast Orange, which I thought was kind of a funny color name, but it's a really bright orange and quite nice. And then this is uh, orangish yellow. And yes, there, I think there is one other yellow, but it's kind of, it's on the greenish side of yellow. Orange, oh my goodness. Orange, yellow. It's way harder to talk and write at the same time than you would think. Okay, so this is uh, this yellow or lemon yellow. And let's see, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the white that I have here. So I'm actually gonna go from the bottom of the page up. That is lemon yellow, which I think is almost uh, like a chartreuse color. Lemon yellow. And um, actually, yeah, no, let's do that. Um, golden ochre is this color. This probably would have been more appropriate next to those, but it's okay. Gold ochre. But I think this is a pretty good spread of colors here. And then we have olive yellow. Just regular olive, really beautiful, sort of mossy green, olive, and then I have ash gray. Tried to get a good representative of neutrals here. Ash gray. And then the last one, other than the white, this is cream. Colored. You can see that there where you wouldn't be able to see the white. Um, one thing though that I am noticing is this seems to have a little bit of flakiness that the, um, and I don't want to put my hands into this oil based media too much, but. Um, it definitely, it seems to have a little bit of flakiness that like little bits of pigment that sit up on the top over the uh, saint Elier oil pastels. Cream. And let's see if I can just put the white over this one. So there we go. That works pretty darn well. And then that's white. Okay, and these are Karan Dash Neo Pastels. Looks like I put my looks like I put my finger or my the side of my hand over here into those greens, but okay, so that's what we have here. I'm gonna put another arrow there and then, okay. And I will put these up to the camera so you can see. So one thing I am noticing, so this is completely dry and it's pretty, um, it's pretty glossy because different uh, acrylics have different, um, 
I don't know what you call it, but they, they would either be matte or glossy or satin finish, but this is more on the glossy side. But it, this is a really beautiful color. I definitely am going to be using that. Um, so that's really good. And like I was saying, I definitely think if you were um, hoping to use a pit artist pen to color your white stitching on your Chic Sparrow creme, I think you need a darker color than that. All right, so here are all the other colors. They're all labeled now. And you can kind of see as I get closer that little bit of flaking of the color on top, which is not, which is not what I have seen in uh, the Sennelier. Okay, so what I'll probably do is put a piece of parchment or plastic or something over this so that it won't bleed onto the next page. So that way I can keep these colors here. They don't, they don't dry really, really quickly. In fact, I think <laughs> there, there is some, some people that say that these never really dry fully, the oil pastels. So something to keep in mind when you're using them. But uh, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.